that's the face of a psychopath. Uh, 400 professional psychotherapists, etc., agreed that that was the best representation of a psychopath in any movie in history. <laughs> and <laughs> he is so good. But anyway, so here we go. Here's the clip. Loretta tells me you're quitting. How come you're doing that? I don't know. I feel overmatched. I always figured when I got older, God would sort of come into my life somehow. And he didn't. And I don't blame him. As far as him, I'd have the same opinion of me that he does. You don't know what he thinks. What you got ain't nothing new. This country's hard on people. You can't stop what's coming. It ain't all waiting on you. That's vanity. So the, the lesson that's learned is the world is not actually really that worse. This has been happening for all of human history. And it's an important message that we all think this is shocking, this is terrible, oh my God, these evil people, oh my God. And we're feeling the oppression that Tommy Lee Jones feels. He's overmatched. He just can't do this. So he actually is gonna quit. Um, but your man points out wisdom that, you know, this country's hardened people. The world has hardened people, it always has been. We've had it too easy since World War II, we got soft, that's true. But what we're seeing now is just part of the cycles, the fourth turning it's called uh, in certain books. And the reality is to think that you have to be the solution to it or you just run away is, is vanity. The solution actually is that everyone works together and overcomes the challenges like we always have for a million years. Um, that's the real message. Now I'll show you one more clip and <laughs> I love this one. Woody Harrelson is just brilliant in this movie. It's a cameo part, mainly. Uh, but in this clip, he's basically showing how we should kind of feel. Not arrogant, but he's demonstrating the way we should kind of feel about the bad guys I'm going to tell you about in the rest of this talk. Um, and I just think it's funny. Uh, but I'll explain at the end. Just how well do you know Sugar? What do you want to know? I just want to know your opinion of her. In general, just how dangerous is he? Compared to what, the bubonic plague? He's bad enough you called me. You know, he's a psychopathic killer, but so what? There's plenty of them around. Killed three men in Del Rio Motel yesterday and two others in that colossal goat fuck out in the desert. We can stop that. Seem pretty sure of yourself. Anyway, Woody says, yeah, we, we can fix that. But the interesting thing is he makes a big mistake. He's a lone wolf. So he goes after and he's full of confidence, like we should be, that we will prevail. Uh, but he does it alone. And he actually, it doesn't work out well for him. But I love the confidence. You know, he says he's a psychopathic killer, but so what? Plenty of those around. And that's true. There's always been the same percentage of sociopaths. I'll show you some of them. Um, but, but things really haven't changed. Technology is coming in. That's a headwind for us. Digital ID, global digital ID, central bank digital currency. Lots of challenges, but at the end of the day, it's the same battle humans have faced against totalitarianism for all time. So, you know, just get with the program. Um, I'm gonna talk now about uh, the World Economic Forum is a nexus, a management nucleus to manage all of the totalitarianism of this century and the coming decades that's being attempted. Um, people think they're a talk shop in Davos, but no, they're, they're the real thing. And you'll get an idea of this throughout this presentation. A, a quick definition I always have to say, fascism should rightly be called corporatism, as it is the merger of corporate and government power, Mussolini. So he was not exactly a nice guy, but this is a very important definition. This is the definition. So when they're calling you a fascist for wanting to keep your society coherent or wanting to keep your kids' education safe, um, they're absolute charlatans because fascism is actually what's happening 
It's a merger of corporate NGO and state power into something really ugly. Um, this man, oh, he also said, for the fascist, everything is the state, nothing human or spiritual exists, much less has value outside the state. In this sense, fascism is totalitarian. Of course it is. What we are seeing now is crystal clear fascism, the alliance of corporate and state and NGOs into a new structure of control. That's fascism. Now, this man here used fancier words, but by God, he wants the exact same thing, as you will see. And uh, I think we know what these types are like. <laughs> so so um, we'll go ahead. Dr. Jakob Norgard, huge credit. Uh, I went to Stockholm to interview him when I saw his initial talks. He did a PhD on the Rockefeller family and foundation in 2012, defended it fully referenced from Rockefeller archives, and it's an incredible story. And it basically explains everything we're experiencing today. That's why it's so amazing. Uh, the Rockefeller lawyers tried to stop him when they found out he was doing this PhD, and they could not stop him, because everything was 100% factual. The story that is 100% factual speaks for itself. It explains the nice weather crisis, it explains the Cerveza sickness, madness, explains everything. Engineer loves something that explains everything because that's when you get to root cause. So his books are astonishing, but Rockefeller Controlling the Game is the one based on his PhD. It's in English, a few more are, farosmedia.se, best books you'll ever read. Um, I gave a talk before in Ledbury last time about the whole Rockefeller story. I'm not gonna do it today because he has a new talk, a new slide pack which he sent me, and it has new characters I didn't know about, and I just think it's a fascinating story. It overlaps a lot with the Rockefeller. But remember what the Rockefeller said, we cannot escape and indeed should welcome the task which history has imposed on us. This is the task of helping to shape a, and I won't say it because I get a warning and a Wikipedia saying it's a conspiracy theory. They said that in the 50s, they've said it ever since. In all its dimensions, spiritual, economic, political, social. So you're talking really bad people here. But they have lovely words. And they want to fulfill the basic purposes of humanity. So the funny thing is, they actually publish and tell you what they're doing. And it's obviously quite shocking that the richest people in America and the most scurrilous people in America, and this guy, Kissinger, are telling you they want to fulfill the basic purpose of humanity. I mean, I'd start getting worried. Unfortunately, no one knew about this until 2020 when this began to come out that 30 or 40 years of preparation for this stuff, uh, the trigger event was, of course, the Cerveza. Uh, I've shared this elsewhere, and Hoddle Kamikaze did a, a better version of my flowchart. I mentioned it earlier, I won't go through it here. All of these things are part of strategies. I see them, and I intuitively sense them and feel them, because I'm a corporate guy. I ran programs in corporate, fairly high level, uh, for decades. These are simply synergistic corporate strategies towards an overarching goal. And the main thing that all of them do, though they each have lots of benefits, right, for these groups, but the main consistent thing they all do as a bonus is weaken society. And the lady earlier asked about anti-meat agenda. Yeah, it's a bonus. It weakens, anything that can weaken society, whether it's mass migration, taking away meat, promoting junk food, insects, whatever, everything that can weaken society is a bonus because it makes the overarching project easier, the program. It always will be easier. Um, and they're smart. This is Nordengard's new talk, the, uh, oh, the nice weather emergency, <laughs> illusionist, and the pact for the future. How many people know that one of the most seismic events in our lifetimes is happening in September with the UN. It's not in any media, right? It's this meeting, the Pact for the Future, and I'll show you what they're pacting on, okay? Uh, not to say that they'll win, but this is how they do it. I'll explain it. Okay, this guy, I didn't know about this guy, Brzezinski or whatever. Power will gravitate into those who control information and can correlate it most rapidly. Our existing post-crisis management institutions will probably be supplemented by pre-crisis management institutions. Ooh, I don't like that. The task of which will be to identify in advance likely social crisis and to develop 
programs to cope with them. This could encourage tendencies during the next several decades towards a technocratic dictatorship. You don't say. <laughs> Leaving less and less room for political procedures as we now know them. 1968. Prophetic. The Rockefellers made this guy the head of their trilateral commission a couple of years later. Yeah, so you identify talent, right? So, the grand chessboard he wrote in 1997, in brief, the US policy and the US State Department and kind of the military industrial complex is kind of one head of the snake. Goal, policy goal must be to create a geopolitical framework that can absorb the inevitable shocks and strains uh, that we mostly make of social political change while evolving into the geopolitical core of shared responsibility for peaceful global management. <laughs> you know? This stuff is so corporate. It's just like, for me, it's like going home. But it's a much higher level, obviously. But otherwise, same thing. Exact same scam. Here he is, Trilateral Commission, ultra-powerful body, non-secret, all the presidents, all the leaders, all the who's who are in there, and they all agree how we need to run the new <coughs> order. Uh, here he is, Chase Manhattan Bank is the Rockefeller Bank, and yeah, <laughs> you know, how can I resist? So, um, but the other, way <laughs> the other way to look at these people is, uh, not to fear them like, you know, Woody, as he said, hey, he's a psychopath, you know, there's lots of them around. We can't fear these people because they are actually revolting. And they should be despised but not feared. And I see them also like parasites. They're like bloated ticks that have the money and the influence to actually feed off society and try and manage it, you know. They're a parasite. Uh, they're just groups of parasites. Trilateral brings them all together, that's all. Uh, so, uh, here we have 87, uh, Grow Harlem, Brundtland, Brundtland Commission, our common future. But you know who our is. It's not us. <laughs> it's the ultra-rich, okay? And, there, yeah, I mean, it's like socialism for all of us, and it's like extreme oligarchy, caviar, cigars, and the finest of wines for them. It's always been the same for all the human history, always. They sell you a nonsense narrative about saving granny and all inclusion, diversity, equality, inclusion, and all that stuff, which actually is nice. And it's all fraud, because they are the most racist on the planet. We know that, but they sell us anti-racism and accuse all of us of being racist. It's like, what's going on? So I know you guys have felt it. So. It's all around sustainable development, and Rockefeller's identified sustainable development is going to be our linchpin, our linchpin to fool all the people, because it just sounds great. They don't care about that. Absolutely not. They just identified it as a ploy. Uh, absolutely just a, a tick. Uh, some of these people are probably a bit sociopathic, but to be honest, I think from what I know of this one is just feeding. Rich, big oil money, born into it, just feeding. They're just feeding. They're not necessarily crazy people. 91, beyond interdependence. So the Trilateral Commission came out with another report after Brundtland, and they said an effective global convention on nice weather change is, of course, essential. No group of countries can expect to limit nice weather on its own. For the first time in history, the nation's world must cooperate. Economic and ecological interdependence has its imperatives. Right. So they knew uh, in the 50s, nice weather crisis was identified without a single scientist in the room by the Rockefellers, the big oil guys. I mean, you couldn't make this up. Nordengard went and researched this when he found out that the nice weather professors in Stockholm and his university had no idea where the nice weather crisis idea came from before 91 when the IPCC was set up in the UN. And he says, how can the nice weather experts have no idea where their science came from? So he went off and looked. It took him two weeks, like me with the health stuff. And he found out it went straight back to Rockefellers, the big oil man in the 50s. And he said, oh my God because he was a nice weather crisis person himself, Nordengard, who was worried about energy politics and did papers on them. And then he goes back and he finds out where they come from. Come on, come on, pull the other one. So, the first global revolution of the Club of Rome, right? Who are these guys? 
ultra rich, uh, nice weather, catastrophous old boys club. That's what the Club of Rome is, but very influential. They come out with this pamphlet, this new book. In searching for a new enemy to unite us, hmm, how do we unite all the people behind our nonsense? We came up with the idea that pollution, yada, yada, the threat of nice weather, right, and the like would fit the bill. Now, you're English people, you know what that phrase means, when something would fit the bill. It's BS, but it'll fit the bill. And they say that actually the real enemy then is us. Their words, not mine. They took some made up nonsense and they basically turned it and said, you're the problem because of the nonsense we just made up. And this is decades ago, okay? I know a lot about the physics of climate systems and trust me, it's nonsense. The, this Club of Rome is just a seething pile of ticks. That's what they are. This turkey, Paul Raskin, right? He's still around, look. The Pole Star Project, funded by the TELUS Institute, all Rockefeller interconnected organs, bunch of Swedish people. They know where they're going. They're trying to plan with computer modeling where the world is going. And they have all these different scenarios, right? It's all BS. Outside of geopolitics and what these kinds of guys are causing in the world, the world is actually extremely stable. That's the good news, okay? So they go through all these things. He's another tick. I don't know if he's a socio. And 2000, the Earth Charter Commission comes together based on his work, right? Even though he's a nobody. And you got all these, oh, they bring in, of course, the Soviet Union's collapsed and America hedge funds are strip mining the Soviet Union, sucking trillions of dollars out of it. But then they say, hey, listen, we bring one of their boys on board, you know, because we want to get the whole lot on board. Uh, Morris Strong, oil billionaire, complete nutter. Uh, and he was put in the UN in the 70s by Rockefeller as the security manager. Complete fake job. Within a year, he's head of the UN Climate Commission. I mean, like, it's just comical, right? Uh, Stevens, son of Nelson, who was the vice president, right? So he's the issue of the loins. This is a family dynasty goal that will go on beyond their deaths. They're long gamers. They're not interested in making more money. And yes, they're the richest family in America. They want to rule it. That's the point. If you have more money than you can possibly ever have, and you're driven, the only other thing that's left is power over your own species. There's no point lording over dogs and cats. It has to be your species. These are simple psychological phenomena. So that's the way they are, Queen Beatrix, God almighty. Uh, bunch of ticks. 2002, the Great Transition and the Earth Charter, UN, Rockefeller. See that, the world being put from pieces back together, right? What's that? 2002. That's build back better. That's what that is, <laughs> right? And that's why all these monkeys and puppeticians are repeating the same nonsense phrase all over the world. Hold on a minute. Build it back better, but what was broken? Oh, well, Cerveza. Oh, you know, there was a cold. We gotta build back. Do you see how ridiculous this stuff is? But that is our strength. And I'll talk about that at the end. The fact that it's such utter nonsense, that's a good thing. Triggers of general crisis, the great transition, 2006. Another path to general crisis might, maybe, possibly, who knows, could be initiated by an unprecedented pandemic. <laughs> Pull the other one, okay? And indeed, they, they managed to <laughs> conjure that up and they talk a lot of nonsense there as well and they try and tie it to disrupted ecosystems to keep the eco nonsense tied into their other nonsense um, they produced this possible triggers and they clearly said were opportunities to further the structures of world government uh, nice weather disruption uh, yeah you know what that is you've been through that one Macro terrorism did a lot with that in the early 2000s and they tried to get everyone hiding under their bed because of a one in a billion chance of being killed by a global terrorist. But it kind of fell in its face because people intuitively knew, I don't think I'm worried about that. So that one kind of faded. End of oil, oh, peak oil, they gave that one up years ago, right? That nonsense wasn't washing. And financial collapse, well, we saw the GFR, the great financial uh, reset thing in 2008. But, you know, I think they're just exploiting those rather than actually creating them. Um, so this is what they say. And then global sustainability. 
the new paradigm, we'll tell them they're all going to live in a paradise, right? Before the crisis, global governance was effective in one area, setting the terms for liberal, blah, blah, blah. But the renaissance that occurred during the global reform era went far beyond the world court, the reconstituted world union, formerly the UN, an utterly corrupt Rockefeller organ, and the world regulatory authority all date from this period. This was a scenario they were doing back in the early 2000s. In other words, what they wanted to sell, right? Classic corporate stuff. God, it brings back memories. Um, but this is the reality in their minds. This is from The Guardian, and this is a real photograph of, I think, Sao Paulo, 2004, and it just shows the haves and the have-nots, inequality in the photograph. You will notice uh, there's actually effectively a wall down there. And what these turkeys I'm telling you about, uh, this is their intended paradigm. And they'll be up here, and we'll get all these ants down here, and then at some stage we'll we'll have to get loads of birth control in because these ants are all over the place and it's quite disgusting. That's largely, I believe, the way they think. And they also had a fortress world potential. You know the guy with the program, right? The other idiot? He also said, well, we could have this nice paradise, but ooh, you never know. In the fortress world's variant that I pulled out of my ass, as the systemic global crisis deepens, powerful international forces, yeah, we know, are able to impose order in the form of an authoritarian system of global apartheid with elites in protected enclaves and an impoverished majority outside. So they're gaming all of this, like. But no one knows any of this because no media will actually just publish and say, hey, look at the crap these guys are coming out with, and they're all presidents and stuff, and maybe we should be looking at this. The media have been taken care of a long time back. So, Alliance for Global Salvation, forces of global order take action, international military, corporate, yeah, and governments, yeah, and NGOs, supported by the most powerful governments, form the self-styled Alliance for Global Salvation, using a revamped UN, which is their, basically their new world, blah, 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 a state of planetary emergency is declared. Now, that was 2002, but you know, you know there's no way that they can declare a state of planetary emergency based on utter nonsense, right? No. Last year, BMJ had 200 doctors, right, wrote a paper, and it was in BMJ, demanding that the UN declare a state of planetary emergency based on nice weather crisis and health. I'm not joking. They, <laughs> it's just astonishing. So anyway, and we'll get to that in a minute. Great transition, there you are, build back better. This fella, Rockefeller, 2005, here he is, right? The nice weather of the nice weather thing is no longer merely or primarily an environmental issue. Right? Here's the coding now, coming from the oil man. It is an energy issue, it's a business issue, it's an investor issue, it's a moral issue, it's a security issue, it's an agricultural issue. You've seen a bit of that, right? A coastal issue, a religious issue, don't know how you figure that one, an urban issue. In short, it is a global issue that touches every conceivable facet of human existence and we know to a certainty that it's utter nonsense. But you see what he's saying. What he also said on the record, this is published, he said, and therein lies our current opportunity. So they are telling you, it's just no one knows because no one is reading the report. And part of that is people's fault because people just want to keep their head in the sand and play with their iPhone. It is a challenge. But anyway, therein lies our current opportunity. And of course, I mean... Uh, he could just be a tick, but I think we'll, we'll promote him to the <laughs> sociopath class. Uh, he's in a long line of family uh, crazies. Here's your lad, right? Nice weather is perhaps the most long-term serious threat to the environment. Of course you're saying that because you're right up to your neck in these scumbags, right? All of these are mostly bloated ticks. This fellow, I don't know how to even define him. Um, this guy is interesting. He's not quite the classic sociopath or... He's just different. I, I won't give any opinions. But your man, no question. Right? 
we know that guy. He, he's responsible, right, for war crimes beyond belief that were all published in the mainstream media. We know he lied and we know he slept like a baby when nearly half a million men, women and children died. We know that for a fact. That means he definitely gets that, right? Oh, P, uh, this is everything they do is the opposite of what they do. It's, it's comical, right? So we got to laugh at them though, they're scum. Uh, 2005, a warning, global warming about the nice weather. We have a narrow remaining window, blah, blah, blah. We have only 50 years to achieve the transition, to scale down resource usage, to terminate inequitable. <laughs> yeah, they have a special definition of that, capital accumulation, and to stabilize and begin the long-term reduction of the global population. Now, that doesn't mean they go around killing everyone, right? With something G or whatever. Uh, they just make a world where no one wants to have kids, you mess up families, mess up society, mess up traditional marriage, talk a lot of sex nonsense, sound familiar? And flood places with ridiculous amounts of movement of people which destabilizes society. That's the way you reduce it. It's not... And it's is 10 yeah, yeah, there's many. And uh, there was also, what's the thing in America in the 60s where um, the something, something plan where you just overload the system to bring in a socialist type madhouse you overload uh, the government uh, like dole and you just keep overloading the systems until it collapses and then you get a revolution does me does the clergy plan of 1926 it, it's all of this is all documented all through history um but of course no one's reading it because the media is feeding them nonsense morning noon and night you're gonna love this guy british now he's a psychotherapist he's not a psychiatrist he can't prescribe drugs i think He's a psychotherapist. I'm not saying that anything wrong with that, but he's not exactly, you know, Einstein or the head of the world. Uh, he's a psychotherapist. He's advisor to the government, and he was trained in the Tavistock Institute. <laughs> but let's give him a hearing, because obviously he has something to say, and all of these guys listened to him and created huge worldwide organizations based on what he had to say. He obviously had some amazing insight given his specialty that he would know and understand if he was going to make a pronouncement. So let's see what he came out with at a big forum where he was brought in to say this. He, the psychotherapist, said, we need to declare a global emergency. Mm, what about uh, psychotherapy is getting too expensive? Because that's all he can speak to. But no, 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 no. He said you got to brand excess CO2 as an ecological toxin. Ah, it's psycho-ops. Obviously, because you don't know nothing about this. He said we need to present a strategy to take the world to zero CO2. The psychotherapist. But he was well rewarded for it, very well. And we need to develop institutions for handling this transition. Handling with an iron fist and a velvet glove of BS about granny, as always. Club of Rome, Pick Institute, always the same people. They just find new scumbags. It's always the same people. I think he earned that. Because yeah. what he said was so outrageous. He's going to come up again. He helped work. Uh, with these guys, the Stockholm Resilience Center. Look at that guy, right? He'd have to take drugs to be able to smile. That's how bad he is. It, 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 there's only one picture with him smiling, and I, I would say it's photoshopped. This is what we're talking about, you know? This is the kind of guy. This crowd in Stockholm, Stockholm's a hotbed for this madness, for whatever reason, the Bayer Institute and, oh my God, the SEI, again, Rockefeller up to their neck. Stockholm Resilience, they set this whole thing up and they worked with that other psychotherapist. And then this guy, Johan, comes out with the planetary boundaries framework, coming from the psychotherapist stuff. These things are sequential. And they come out with all this guff, right, that they pulled out of, I don't know, maybe other psychotherapist's asses or maybe it was just his. And they got into Nature magazine. And Nature published it. And Nature's actually a real science magazine, and they published this. Someone made a call. 
And they published it. And they started getting all the scientists going, oh, wow. They'll believe it because they're gullible, because they're academics. Sorry, they're not corporate guys. Academics are easy flesh. For people like corporate, like even like me, they're easy. They're soft. They're gullible. It's just the way, no offense to academics. I'm just saying it's the nature of them. It's not their fault. So, Club of Rome, same year, on it. The Global Assembly, they're piling more nonsense on top of it. They got Queen Beatrix in. 2012, we've got Bayer Institute. Again, massive links to Rockefeller, Stockholm, all the nice weather societies, all linked to Rockefeller, all linked to Club of Rome. And they get now, I think that's science, science journal, navigating the Anthropocene, improving Earth system governance. And this is still the stuff that came from the frickin' psychotherapist, <laughs> right? And they just add on a pastiche of sciencey junk on top of it. You couldn't make it up. That's why we need to feel positive. And I'll, I'll tell you at the end why. Human societies must now change course and steer away from the critical tipping points that came from the psychotherapist that we paid who's clearly really knowledgeable about stuff like that, in the Earth's system that might lead to rapid and irreversible damage. It's like, oh, that cold might kill your granny. Okay? This requires fundamental reorientation and restructuring of national and international institutions, I bet it does, toward a more effective Earth system governance of planetary stewardship. stewardship. Do you see the word salad? I've been through this for decades in corporate. You lay it on with a trowel. It's just the way you do it. And there's so much nonsense laid on that people say, well, you know, it's an emergency video. Uh, really funny, really funny they are. Multi-billionaire comes in, piles in a load of money for this new initiative, the Global Challenges Foundation. We have Mr. Socio there, of course. And he's a board member, pretty senior. Our mission is to facilitate the changes needed in global governance to mitigate global catastrophic risks. Risks that we'll make up. <laughs> and I think they had, oh yeah, risks that threaten human civilization. Think big, guys. You're going to try and scare people with nonsense? Make sure it's big nonsense. Uh, 12 risks, the case for a new risk category. So at this stage, like they're basically just throwing a dice and pulling a risk out of it. A new shape remodeling global cooperation. A prize to reshape the world. Think big. If you're going to do a scam, make it big, you know? So here we are, Mr. Socio, at the World Economic Forum, right? What's he saying about this prize? The new Shape Prize is the first ever attempt to invite the whole world, how nice, to come up with the best possible innovative ideas of how we can find a what. I hope he wouldn't say something that gets you a, a Wikipedia article and a warning on YouTube for saying, if you're a little guy. Yes, that's what he said, because that's what it's all about. It's in our face. Okay, but they won't succeed. They're going to have challenges. The new shape prize, here we have the rich guy, we have a bunch of ne'er-do-wells who've apparently won the prize for some junk they wrote. And uh, yeah, it's Arthur Dahl, of course, environmental, kind of, look at him, you know the type. A lawyer, uh, always represented lawyers. Oh, World Bank Group, World Economic Forum, yeah, right. And they come out with the winning thing, I think. And it's all about global institutions and how we need UN to actually run all our lives. And that's our great idea that won the prize. The very <laughs> idea that they knew was expected and they wrote it and gave it back and they won the millions of dollars. It's a joke. And then, of course, March 2020, we get the emergency. And you remember, of course, 20 years before, they had identified their smorgasbord, their menu of emergencies that would be enable triggering the next phase and here it comes it's a cold right you know you could have been a bit more inventive guys but you know it worked fair play to you and uh we have the great reset of course kicks off and uh, we have the usual bunch of socios and uh here we are 2020 they did a lot of stuff in 2020 it was like as soon as the cold came out the surveys are cold these guys went into overdrive i mean it was so obvious just it was embarrassing all of this stuff started having global governance forms, September. Uh, Cerveza, the Great Reset, came out in June. Like, 
Klaus Schwab came out with a book and published it in June. But should it take 12 months to do that? Three months after this nonsense started, he has a book out on comical, comical. So here we are, global governance and all the, they always get some diversity from countries way over there and it's all part of the ridiculousness. Uh, this person sadly a disgrace to Ireland, but anyway. Um, and then here they are, the Climate Governance Commission is set up and the winners are all invited, right? Oh, sorry, the nice weather. And this guy's back in running it. Yeah. Commissars. Not, not commissioners, right? And this, oh, they drag him out. Yeah, look at this. And uh, at the usual, the usual junk. And fully financed. A lot of big oil backing there. A lot of big oil backing in the partners. Like these are over Dubai and all. A lot of big oil money in here. And of course, the centerpiece always. And the federalist movement. All the same characters, you know. 28th September 2020, oh, we got a resolution. Only together. Can we save granny? No, can we build resilience against future colds and stuff? Another global, right. Multilateralism is not an option, but a necessity. In other words, we need an NWO. We need to build back better, sustainable word salad. United Nations must be at the center because they said it decades before. The United Nations will be the new world government. They said it, new Bretton Woods, new agreements, yada, yada, yada. Okay, really quickly now, 10th September, this, this <laughs> I don't even know what to say about that yoke. This yoke comes out. The process surrounding our common agenda is an opportunity to recommit to all our fundamental enduring blah, 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 nonsense. And now it's our common agenda. Uh, back in the 90s, it was our common future. Now it's an agenda, because now we got this, the cold <laughs> has given us our platform to get going, right? Get moving. Hilarious. This is the stuff they came up with. Just look at it. Like complete liars. All of this nice stuff they don't give an F about. You know, just look at it. That's what they care about. That's what they care about. You know, in there is what they actually care about. That is just taking the piss. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And that one, <laughs> I don't know, is that even funnier? Um, and this is obviously a complete lie. Uh, they don't care about pollution, really. They only care about magical uh, stuff. Now, here's what I was telling you about, and I'm going to finish hopefully soon. Summit of the Future is next month. This is the biggest thing that's happened probably in our lifetimes, in a sense, and no one knows about it. And they are going to sign with all of our useless leaders the Pact for the Future, which will sign us up to a long stream of utter dystopian madness. And our idiots will sign it. Because our idiots in political positions are so stupid or so corrupt, they're okay with it. So that's a problem. Um, but signing it won't change the world. Uh, they'll have a massive problem if more and more people become awake to this, in fairness. Uh, but they always sign it first and they always get the paperwork done in advance. Because later then, your puppetician, when you say, what the hell are you doing this for? They can say, oh, well, this was signed off. So there is power in signing off this madness. And remember a certain Adolf back in the 30s and 40s. Uh, he got the laws changed, so he never broke the law. And Stalin did the same, actually. Always change the law ahead. So you weren't really breaking the law. Corporate, clever. They do the same thing. Um, Pact for the Future, uh, blah, 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 the Pact for the Future, just completely crazy stuff. And they're all talking about future generations they are going to enshrine because they care about future kids. They care about their future kids. They don't give a damn about anyone else's. I can tell you that to a certainty. I have enough life's experience to know that. The goal of such a pact should be a global transition by the states and non-state actors, NGOs. Do you see how all of those sweaty actors have come out of the woodwork all over the place and our tax dollars are fun In Ireland, our tax dollars are funding 85% of the non-governmental organization's money comes from our government. Our tax pays all these crazies to lobby for nonsense against our interests and our taxes are paying them to do it. You gotta say they do play good games. The NGO is a massive problem. So anywhere you see an NGO, dig and look and you will see, 
you'll see smelly stuff. Um, a circular economy they want, addressing supply and demand in a way that achieves balance with the planet. Uh, that's a centralized, organized economy. That's communism. That's an organized economy. Supply and demand centrally managed. It's not price-based. It's managed. So that's what they want. They want fascism slash communism, and they want to sit on top of it all. Okay. Techno this is basically technocracy inc. from the 30s to move to that kind of system of tops-down totalitarian technocratic management. And Rockefeller funded technocracy, and Rockefeller was there in the 30s onwards as well. Always Rockefeller and all their peripheral organizations. Carbon neutral future, they're all gushing about. The race to zero. We should all be excited about destroying ourselves. <laughs> we should be racing <laughs> to dystopia. <laughs> uh, you see how ridiculous it is? Safeguarding the future. A declaration for future generations should state a firm commitment to securing the interest of future generations in all decision making by identifying, managing, and monitoring global existential risks and by focusing policies and programs on long-term sustainable development. So they, they're pretending they care about future generations and they want their voices to be in their pact. Right? How are they going to do that? Well, easy. They're going to use data. Foresight and data. They're going to get everyone connected to the web, get all our data and simulate all risks, and then they're going to help the future generations. Yeah, so nice. Funny, Futures Lab Network has set up, right? United Nations, a decentralized network to improve decision making. Global Digital Compact, they want signed off all around digital technologies that empower people. No, they want digital tracking on everyone signed off. And like Adolf, once you sign it off, then everyone says, well, look, we signed this off. I know now it looks like it's insane and it's like terrifying, but shit, we signed it off two years ago. What can we do? More than me do job's worth. You know, we signed it off like. That's the kind of stuff. Corporate. AI. You know all the AI hype? And it's just a joke, but you see hundreds of billions going in and not an idea where the money's going to come back out. And like the Wall Street's lost its mind. Of what's going on? Uh, AI can address nice weather by using advanced... Neil Ferguson, nice weather modeling tied to information about urban mobility and behavior patterns. When you're tracking everyone's movements, we'll be able to use all this to protect the future generations, right? More effective delivery, complete junk. I mean, I'm an engineer at a high level for 35 years, and it does offend me when people come out with utter nonsense in the technical sphere. It really makes me angry. And that's my challenge with, with going through this material, because it's just shocking nonsense. The whole thing, even the IT stuff, the whole lot, the, the excuses they've used to get this horror in are so stupid. It really offends me. Sorry, I've got to get that out. Ministry of Truth, of course. We have misinformation. We have disinformation. And see the way they've drawn it. They're thinking, hmm, people won't really fall for this ridiculous nonsense, and it's clear we just want to censor people. So how can we put something in there that's a motive that people will kind of agree with to sell our lies? Hate speech. <laughs> we put hate speech in, and people say, I don't like hate speech. Oh, hate speech is terrible. And then we get our full censorship ecosystem in on the back of this lie. They don't give a damn about hate speech. Most of the people at the high level here are total racists. No question about it. Um, Ministry of Truth. So that's, they want to get that in. And this, this guy who recently said it's not just a nice weather kind of warming problem. It's a boiling problem. Yes. He said that last year. I said, yeah. it's boiling. Yeah. Nothing has changed. All the data shows there's been slight tiny shifts of around 0.5 degree in around 60 years. And even those are debatable. And he says, and we're now boiling. It's all a scam. And it's all politics and PR and propaganda. At a time of rampant misinformation, climate denial, tax on human rights, we need education, yeah, indoctrination, that distinguish fact from conspiracy, actually create lies. 
instill respect for the science. Yeah, we weren't through that from 2020 onwards. We know what you mean when you say the science and celebrate humanity. Go on out. Now you're taking the piss because we know. We know you are an anti-human scumbag. F for certain. And yet you will say this because your scriptwriter says you got to says you got to say stuff like that. And this yoke comes out. <laughs> right? Same time. We all need to become nice weather activists and we need to uproot the system. Of course we do. Because a bunch of bad guys want to take over the system. So you idiots, especially young people, need to be indoctrinated to uproot the system so we can laugh at you from way up high. But it's not going to happen, I think. Behavioral science, UN, emotions as driver of nice weather action. Oh yeah, they're going through everything. Now you see where psychotherapists fit in. It's all a mixture of psyops and propaganda and nonsense and pseudoscience. And, but they use real science that actually works. So you know you had the nudge units. And half of the, uh, what was that team that ran the, the cold? It, Sage. Half of them were psychologists. They were telling you <laughs> all the way through. They were actually telling you what they were doing. Of course, a lot of people just couldn't believe it. Um, it's comical. It's comical. Transforming global governance. I'm going to skip through this. They're all talking about future capabilities. All this word salad, inclusive, blah, blah, DEI. It's just complete ridiculous. Um, and then they're saying, convene and operate emergency platforms for future complex global shocks. So they don't want to just have a crisis about, say, a cold that's actually here. They want a system that will lock down and put everything in place for something that might happen in the future. And they're going to use AI and data to predict a crisis. So we'll actually get locked down and dicked around with for something they just made up and they say might happen using our modeling. Sound familiar? Yeah, yeah good trick. Nice work if you can get it. The emergency platform is what they want to sign off. Look at the partners in the multi-actor. I mean, look at them. No offense to the gentleman earlier who was kind of in pharma, but yeah, there's a lot of pharma in there. <laughs> and the World Bank, because to be honest, all the World Banks, Bank for International Settlements, Central Banks, they're all up to their neck here at very high levels. It's about managing the world, right? Uh, yeah, you get a lot of them, right? Um, I won't read through this because I want to get to the end, but I mean, it, it's just the same nonsense. I, it's, it's hard for me to read. And then... Possible future global shocks. A major nice weather event. Well, that sounds nice. I'd like that. Yes. I'd like that. You'd maybe go to the beach. <laughs> oh, sorry, you don't mean that. You mean I need to be locked down and not use any diesel and, and basically become a fly. Oh, sorry, I thought you meant it was nice weather. We'd go to the beach. No, you know this. Future pandemic. More colds. Who'd have thought we could have more colds? Jeez, that'd be shocking bad, wouldn't it? That'd be terrible. If you had more colds, you'd be shocking. Sure, Jeez, the granny might die. This is what we're talking about. Event involving biological agents. Uh, we know what you mean there. And we know who will be behind them. <laughs> and it won't be some kind of scumbags in Iran in some lab out in the desert. It'll be your lads or your proxies. Yeah. Disruption to global flows of goods. Like, what, ships turn sideways in canals and stuff? Yeah. Okay. Cyberspace, global digital connectivity disruption. Yeah, we saw that a few weeks ago, involving your people, your organizations. Yeah, I'm sure you can do a bit of that. Major event in outer space. Hmm. Okay. Wonder what that is. Are they going to pretend there's an asteroid and show us footage of an asteroid hurtling towards us? Maybe. Maybe. Stranger things have happened. Unforeseen black swan event. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hedge, hedging. This is this scummer at the... It was basically his State of the World address in Dubai. I mean, God almighty. Because there will certainly be what we call the black swans. The unpleasant surprises which will come our way. Look at him. I rest my case. This is your lad, right? <laughs> what did he say on the back of it, a cop, right? <laughs> what did he say? Oh, oh, uh, we have to put ourselves on what might be called a, a warlike footing around the nice weather. 
Couldn't make it up. I told you. Couldn't make it up. Um, governing our planetary emergency, and there they all are. This fella, I think, again, that's probably photoshopped or he had drugs, yeah. <laughs> uh, the world faces a deepening planetary emergency and is on a reckless path forward towards, because the psychotherapist told me that in the pub last week, uh, toward catastrophic climate, nice weather, having already overstepped six of nine nonsense uh, made up uh, boundaries. And I've looked through them, it's just farcical to an engineer. And then I won't even read that because it makes me feel sick. Um, <laughs> global planetary emergency. And remember BMG last year uh, did a big thing with tons of doctors demanding the UN declare a planetary emergency. So this is real, right? Uh, Summit of the future. That's what they want. And they want to elaborate in the UN Secretary General's proposed emergency platform to design and convene an interagency, intergovernmental NGO planetary emergency platform urgent coordinated action and we know exactly what the action will be it'll be the same kind of crap they pulled before for the cold right and it's all club of rome rockefeller same crowd um they have an international planet or panel on planetary boundaries they have the global commons alliance to shape a nation you need a government to shape a planet you need an alliance of really nasty people that's they don't say that bit at the end uh, here's the partners of the alliance, Rockefeller, Rockefeller, Oil Men, Club of Rome, Ultra Rich, World Economic Forum, Big Banks, Ultra Rich, a uh, bunch of other ne'er-do-wells. Uh, I mean, it's, it's always, do you see the way it's always the same crowd? They've literally, one bunch of organizations have carried this for 50 years through to the, the nonsense that it's become. It, it's hilarious. Um, our vision, I won't even read that, the Global Commons Alliance, it's just disgusting. The lies, formula for systems transformation straight from Rockefeller, right? The Earth Commission determines the science. Sound familiar, right? What's their second step in their corporate junk? The science-based target network sets the targets. I mean, this is, well, is this an engineering student straight out of college? It's pathetic. The Earth HQ communicates the science i.e. propaganda and indoctrination of made-up science. Um, the Systems Change Lab monitors and accelerates the changes deemed necessary. <laughs> the Accountability Accelerator, a little bit of alliteration there, they like their, holds companies, cities and countries accountable. Of course it does, like when the cold was going around. A lot of accountability held there, right? So there you are. Earth Commission, look, it goes on and on. It's all the same people. It's all the same groups again and again and again, all scheming this crazy stuff. And that is not a Photoshop picture, Dr. Nordengard said. He got it from this madman's TED talk. He actually put a wheel to steer the world with him behind it. I mean, this is an advantage. This stuff is so nuts. It's great that they haven't got real problems that they're exaggerating that if we had to argue against them, we'd kind of have a problem because we'd say you're exaggerating that real problem. It's much easier for us because the whole thing is completely ridiculous. You know, it'd be much harder if they had real issues that they exaggerated and then you're accused of being against a real issue. It's in our advantage that all their issues are nonsense. It really is. Um, the great transformation, more of a, we're living through a change of historical scale and scope, simply because they say that. This shift will be as significant as the change from a world of hunter-gatherers to an agrarian society, and then again into an industrialized world. That's 100% nonsense. They have just said that, and that is ridiculous. That makes no sense. And here's their structure. There's that asshole with the steering wheel, right? <laughs> who's, uh, who's sitting up at the top with Rockefeller and the oil man and the banks. And then they have the digital world brain that's taking all surveillance and tons of data. And that will predict future crises from the emergency platform because they'll have CCTV and they'll have smartphones and social credits and smart cities and sustainable development, ESGs and education and media, governance. Look at this. There's no conspiracy theory at all. There isn't even a shred. This is in your face, totalitarianism. It doesn't even need to be debated. It's self-evident, I, I think. 
This environmenty guy, you can see him there, said, recently, maybe the best solution to climate change would be a nuclear winter for a few years to cool down the planet very quickly. And in the longer term, it would be in our best interest than any other solution tried at the moment. He said that. He won the prize, five million. He is their best top guy who wrote their thing for the future. And he said that. And this is Dr. Jakob Norgengard, a great friend, a brilliant man who has pulled all of this out from thousands of pages of official documents. And I wanted you to hear his voice, but these are his words at this point of the presentation where he just showed what I showed you, that, that crazy guy. <laughs> Have you ever heard such? <laughs> it seems like we have been captured by the Heaven's Gate cult. Planet Earth about to be recycled. Your only chance to survive or evacuate is to leave with us. But I suggest that we say no to these insane plans. Thank you for me. <laughs> that, by the way, is, you know, the Kool-Aid? That was the Heaven's Gate cult where he brought them all to South America and 900 people committed suicide because they thought they were escaping with him. I mean, literally, Jacob is correct. This stuff is this nuts. It's this stupid and ridiculous. It's just good that it's so ridiculous because it is an advantage. So look, there's too much here. That was one I threw in. The welfare of humanity is always the alibi of tyrants. That is so, so relevant with what you've seen and what they're doing always the same and it's all bullshit and i can tell you that from a master technologist and an expert problem solver leading hundreds of engineers in complex problems across multiple countries for decades i am not self-edifying the whole lot is bullshit it's corporate nonsense speak the nice weather stuff the cold stuff was sad for very aged you know immunocompromised people it was tough but then they pretty much accepted that they made it themselves so <laughs> Who are you going to blame, right? It's crap. And I mean, it's literally, this is a joke, but you know what? It's nearly not a joke. The TV told me that if I eat bugs and enslave myself on behalf of the ruling 1%, that the weather will get gooder. <laughs> and if you look into the dynamics of, of atmospheric systems, and like everywhere you can see that it's completely absurd what they're saying, and sadly, no one, most people don't know it, but it's literally that bad. And there's more of those. The TV told me that if I pay money to the government, the weather will be gooder. <laughs> it's that bad, guys. I mean, it's just that bad. So they have their reset, and uh, they've added all of their nonsense in a big wheel. Isn't it great? Lovely big wheel. It's like, I don't know, Blue Peter. And uh, they have a narrative that's complete junk. There's elements of truth here and there, but broadly, I'm just telling you, it's complete junk. And we have the counter-narrative, and it's easy. And the key is you don't talk about stuff on Facebook. You don't really talk about five or... Even though that may be a problem, you don't talk about the guy in the yacht, right? Probably State Department had an involvement with the guy in the yacht. Don't talk about any of that peripheral nonsense. I think we need to talk about classic geopolitics, politics, and publications and data from the UN and what they are planning and how they own our puppetitions, and it's all documented, and we need to stick to that because that's reality. And all these other things on 9-11, rear view mirror, and they're irrelevant anyway, sadly, at this point. So I just think that's a bit of advice. Uh, there's loads of positive signs. I mean, in Canada, the Conservative Party Canada openly said no WEF, people, no mandatory digital ID, no CBDC. He might not really mean it, but this is coming out now. Japan had a huge demonstration against the WHO pandemic nonsense, and they're not known for that. So it's getting out. This rally to Geneva in June, I covered some of it. Uh, fantastic. They all went on buses, and I think, was it Dan Aston Gregory and some people here? Brilliant. Great, great stuff. Um, Heart Group, Health Freedom Defence, Australian Society. There's so many groups out there. Rational Ground, Pandata from South Africa, superb. Um, Brownstone, I'm after El Salvador next week. I'm going to be in Connecticut. They want me to go over to their conference there. Um, superb intellectuals uh, and 
They do brilliant writing, all fully referenced, exposing a lot of this nonsense. In fact, Jeffrey Tucker, their guy, wrote many pa pieces back in 2006 declaring how dangerous it was that the Bush administration was using a teenager's project to talk about social distancing and lockdowns in future pandemics. That's 2006, this Bush administration. This stuff has history. This was long time coming, this craziness. I was uh, giving a talk in Rebel Capitalist in Orlando, and the night before my talk on the Saturday, I had a, I had a main keynote uh, on this kind of stuff. This came out, I thought this is perfect timing. Florida, Lee County Republican Assembly passed resolution calling UN, WHO, and WF terrorist organizations. So, I mean, they didn't get it all the way through, but, but the fact that this is happening, I mean, there's awareness. It's, my way of simply create and propagate counter-narratives, true counter-narratives, don't go to things that are debatable, questionable, or conspiracy smelling. Don't care if they're true. They have to be really balls to the wall, documented facts. These guys have handed us all of what they're doing and what they want to do. So I, I just, I don't want to overstate that. Um, leveraging, supporting the groups, because there are freedom groups. If you're a lone person, band together, create communities, meet in real life, try and support the groups, use the publications from Brownstone, use the stuff that's high quality and referenced, and together we'll completely change this in the coming years. And convert cleverly. You do any wild-eyed stuff or talk about stuff that's not balls to the wall, nailed down, that you can convince someone with clear facts, a little bit like Nordengard is doing, um, just be very careful. You'll just alienate people and, and scare them. Um, buy local, locally produce as much as possible. Obviously, use cash as often as you can. Prepare contingencies, hedge against adversity, but a big part of that is community. Because we'll need community when nonsense starts. Network like hell, that's another community point. Network all over the place. Get political, get involved. Push these puppetitions a bit and start pointing out who's given them orders, um, et cetera. And uh, the last word to Shigur, the psychopath. And this is an interesting line. And basically, he is saying to Woody Harrelson that the rules he followed have led him to a really bad place. So what use were his rules? What use was his system? And because I view all the guys I just showed you as kind of in the sociopathic spectrum or, or just ticks, I think they look at us in the same way with contempt. Because if the people we're looking down at as we try and make an ant farm for them, if they can't work this out, and if they're following rules that they're looking in a phone and they don't believe anyone just because we told them that everything about bad people above them is a conspiracy theory and they believe that, if they're that silly, they deserve, and they deserve us to rule them. In fact, you could argue they need us, because look at them. I mean, we told them to wear masks that have no scientific effect whatsoever on a cold, and they all wore them. Yeah, we threatened them. Yeah, we brought in laws and threats, but still, they wore them. So maybe they deserve it. So here's Shigar the psychopath saying it, one of my favorite lines of all time. All right. Let me ask you something. If the rule you followed brought you to this, of what use was the rule? And that is the way I see a lot of these characters that we went through there now. If the rule that fo you followed in, in, in your life brought you to this, which is a very bad situation, trust me, what happens next, of what use was the rule? He's just saying, he's questioning him. But what rule did you follow to end up here? What rule have we all followed that guys who are running this shit show I described to you can look at us and say, you lot, if the rule you followed was not to see what we're doing to you, you deserve to be ruled. You deserve to be an ant firm, social credit score. They've got a point. But I think that's changing now. And it'll get very interesting when more people know who has been causing all of the problems. And that is the interesting thing. Who's been causing that stuff in the UK the last month or two? I'm not getting into the politics. I know where that comes from. It's self-evident. It comes from the top. We know. Keir Starmer said he's not interested in Westminster. He was asked by a journalist, 
which would you prefer to work for Westminster or kind of or the WF? He said, oh, WF. He says, because stuff gets done over there. It doesn't get, that's bullshit. He just works for the WF, that's all. It's not complicated. So anyway, that's it. And um, yeah, the same slide. But we'll beat him. We'll beat him. And um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Well, we do this quick question because the gentleman says really fast. It's yep, it's a short question. <laughs> are you seriously, seriously telling us that oil interests are funding a climate emergency scare when, when they are exactly the ones funding those very few climate scientists who, who, will, who will deny that it's happening no. at all? Because if you are, that's the nuttiest thing all I've ever heard. You didn't hear anything because that is the grand chess game. This is counterintuitive because it's smart. The big Rockefeller oil money, right, set all of these institutions in place to create a new world management. All of the oil stuff, the banks and the oil and all the people with all the money essentially want to, and I don't blame them, have a properly Western managed system that ideally would bring in all the other countries and the BRICS, but that's getting a bit kind of contentious now because the BRICS are rising and the, the supremacy of the dollar, you know, America's... You need to know the geopolitics. You are viewing things so simplistically. Oh, well, the oil guys, well, why would they want no oil? You make scarcity, you own the world. J John D. Rockefeller in the early 1900s. The Rockefellers funded people in Mao's organization before he came to power. They funded Stalin, right? The, these people are so far above average people in smarts and long game that it seems like, oh, but that doesn't make sense. Of course it makes sense. I've just shown you the full. And there's another talk I've given specifically on the Rockefellers and Dr. Nordengard's book that fully goes through that. It's the perfect system. If you own the only real energy in the world and you network together, you make a cartel. You make a cartel. And then you slowly bleed out the high value gold, black gold. You slowly bleed it out and you manage the world. That's their vision. Just Stop Just Oil is funded by a Rockefeller niece. Yeah. <laughs> you work, right, for a pharma. You have just stated stuff that makes no sense to me because Dr. Jakob Nordengard published and defended a PhD in 2012 and has written a book with around 500 references and it's all cut and dried where all this came from. And you say that a simplistic little comment like, why would the oil people do the criteria? It's absurd what you're saying. I'm sorry to say it, sir. It's all documented in people who have done PhDs. And you're throwing out an opinion and saying that that makes me silly when you just throw out a random opinion that makes no sense. No, it doesn't make Read the book. Read the book. Read the book. It's not destroying anything. It's cartelling and co coordinating. Well, I tell you, if this is the best the other side come up with, I think that's great news for us too. Sorry, sir. But that is great news if this is it.